let's bring up our first keynote speaker, which is Kim Folsom. She is amazing. She's the founder and CEO of First Capital Partners, Inc., the largest private provider of growth funding for service-based businesses and the only black and women-led revenue-based venture platform raising $150 million in committed capital. She's got a whole bunch of things under her name, but the one I really want to call out is she's also the founder of Founders First CDC, a nonprofit community development and micro-business accelerator that's helping to expand economic access, knowledge, business capability for underrepresented small businesses. I love her. She's incredible. She's going to talk about the ESG plus trends. Let's bring her up. Come on up, Kim Folsom. Come on up on stage. Camera oh. on, mic on. There we go. Yes, hello, there she hello, is. Hello, hello. I'm so here. Thanks, everyone. Hey, I want to ask you a question. What was the most surprising thing that happened to you in your um, career? What was the most surprising thing that happened? Oh, my gosh. There's like a hundred of many things. But the biggest one, I would say, is the fact that building the confidence that if you can uh, dream it, it can happen. I love uh, I mean, that. You can if dream you, it. it it can happen. It can happen, you know, and if nothing you get out of what I say to you today, I am representative of that. I, I am that. living I my that. blessings every day. I am going to turn it over to you. You're fantastic. I'll see you next. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm super excited to join you today and share with you some perspective with regards to ESG plus T and, and how we look at it at Founders First. As mentioned, I am uh, Kim Folsom. I'm the founder, chairperson, and CEO of Founders First Capital Partners and the founder of Founders First CDC. I come to what I do from a 30-year journey. Founders First is my seventh business. And um, you know, like many of you, I uh, started my career as a software engineer with a vision of wanting to be Bill Gates, believe it or not. Um, so exciting to really be able to step into um, my, my view and, uh, and, and vision for my future. Uh, and I'm, I love this, this challenge that's put together around being able to draw the future you. Oh my goodness, I mean, Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, I tell you the five year, five, fifth grade old student that um, got exposed to business by working in the cafeteria in elementary school, if somebody would have told me I would have been running a $150 million impact investment platform uh, some uh, 60 plus years later, um, I would tell them, you know, uh, believe it. So all of you listening on, please, please, please know your vision is possible. So what I want to share with you today is about this topic of ESG plus T um, and, and give you a little bit more context around, you know, my perspective on it. You know, so many folks are talking about this in so many areas, and I'm so excited that um, WIC Women in Cloud have launched the Accelerator to help women be able to jump into this uh, opportunity. This is, I believe, what the internet was when I started my um, first business some um, uh, 20 uh, plus, 25 plus years ago. Um, so take advantage of this. And my entrepreneurial journey included uh, going through six accelerators. You know, as what we do at Founders First, we're one of the largest accelerators focused on helping grow businesses. Um, you know, take advantage of this uh, ESG accelerator that um, was just mentioned. Um, so there's so much talking about, you know, ESG and DEI initiatives and how it can help your company be more sustainable, good for the economy and less likely to fail. You know, business, why is this such a big deal? Because businesses that are practicing this, the large, you know, public fortune, you know, 1000 businesses, 
it comes down to profits. Those businesses that follow, follow this practice um, get a chance to demonstrate doing good and doing well. And it's not just words, it's actually economics as well. They generally perform over 30% better. And so that's why more and more uh, folks are following it, even though in the unfortunate times, some people have politicized some of this view. But a little bit more, um, you know, everybody should benefit from this meritocracy in, uh, in the economy instead of having resources go to a small class of privileged groups. I mean, in this whole conversation around, uh, you know, global warming and, you know, things that are, are uh, you know, continuously increasing, you know, this is uh, also one of the drivers that are getting folks, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to follow this. And then it gives everybody a chance and advocating um, what we do at Founders First is to advocate to grow and fund diverse led business. And we don't just talk about it. You know, as of this year, we've worked with over 650 companies. On average, we um, serve hundreds of companies every year. And uh, so some of what I'll share with you will be from that perspective. Um, with regards to the trends in the ESG uh, plus T, I will share with you that, you know, while folks talk about the trends, I would say it's more of a shift. You know, for a long time, you know, large organizations have been focused more on the E, the environmental, as well as the G, but not so much the S, um, which it can sometimes you have the folks say, well, gosh, S is so difficult to measure because how can you manage uh, social impact? And for large corporations, this is just not what they do, which some of the, the work that was announced around what uh, WIC is doing is helping, you know, like Founders First to help organizations be the bridge to do this. But with larger corporations, you know, they'll tend to focus on the E side and, and look at the large carbon footprint and why the uh, environmental push is so important. However, you know, with regards to, um, you know, these large corporations, there's also a push. And as was talked about, the uh, stakeholder capital being able to allocate those resources to more uh, diversifying the workforce and diversifying their supply chains to put offerings in the, in the market and collaborations in the market that provide social impact uh, and creating change that spills over and connects into smaller business environments and smaller organizations like uh, many of us that are on on, on this uh, summit today. With regards to the, the technology push, you know, from the various uh, practices, um, you know, for some of uh, in this latest, you know, 10 plus years, there's the avocation of STEM. You know, it used to be when I was in undergraduate school in engineering, it was called non-traditional um, careers uh, because, you know, women generally didn't pursue that path. But there's a mandate to increase the number and representation of uh, of innovators uh, and diversify that, that batch. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention is that while there's been the latest conversations about the latest trends in ESG, this has been going on for many, many, um, uh, you know, more than uh, 20 years. And probably if you do the research, it's been going on even further. But one particular example I wanna bring to your uh, uh, attention is uh, Indra Nui, who was the first woman who was the CEO of PepsiCo, an engineer like many of us in training. Uh, and, uh, you know, she was one of the first women of color who led a 50, the Fortune 50 company. Uh, and a lot of her strategies that she put in place of this design process um, was, was implemented and many of the innovations that she put in place at, um, at Pepsi and turned around their business significantly. These included changing the packaging of their products to reduce the carbon footprint. From an S standpoint, it involved you know, implementing practices that expanded the diversity of their organization and provided a highly technical, um, diverse professional and executive teams the opportunity to contribute and provide them with um, a supportive family structure. Uh, so, you know, this isn't new. And as you know, we as women have led the way in so many practices. So I encourage you in your, um, 
in your spare time as you look at you know examples and role models who've led the way even when they were the first with what they do uh, to look into her story and listen to some of the podcasts where she shares some of the innovation but she really implemented a comprehensive um, ESG strategy that included the E, the S, and the G, because she ensured that her governance strategy also um, provided that it, that uh, organizational support that you could mix both purpose and profit as an initiative. Um, so I wanted to share with you a little bit with regards to you know what can companies do or what can organizations do with regards to uh, ESG from a company standpoint, especially the major corporates that are represented here. You know they want to help and and be good uh, corporate citizens and push more strength behind the S in the ESG plus T by investing in technology and diversification and working toward that more positive impact uh, and by collaborating with organizations. For entrepreneurs, you know, look for opportunities, initiatives like what was announced in this new accelerator to prioritize integrating ESG into your 2023 business and business strategies and objectives. Don't wait, you know, take this as an opportunity. And um, for the sponsors, you know, that are leveraged, I ask you to leverage your relationships with organizations like WIC to meet your ESG initiatives, you know, and take your learnings from this conference and use them as a guide for best practices moving forward. Um, you know, ESG plus T is real and it's not going away. For a long time, ESG and CSR were more about looking good and showing photos. I call it kind of diversity theater a bit, but now you can see the fact that um, you need to really have a real ESG focus. And as long as there's a push toward reporting and benchmarks, um, then you know it's going to have more organizations that uh, follow this practice. Because the reality is, you know, um, if all things are equal and all money is green, this whole benefit that organizations get out of ESG is not going away. Um, I want to also share a bit about how you know my organization, Founders First, is helping to contribute to the whole ESG phenomena. I consider the team that we've put together at Founders First. You know, we are some. ESG superheroes with our mission to create a more inclusive economy. We've built our entire organization focused on solving racial and social economic gaps that help companies run by women and people of color and underrepresented groups, um, uh, as well as those operating in lower and moderate income areas. Um, we do this through our, uh, our structured educations, connections, capital, capital, capital. We write checks, many of them every quarter we're funding these businesses. And we don't stop once we write the check, we advocate and amplify their success. We do this to focus uh, through some on our growth business accelerator, and then the other through our revenue-based um, financing impact investment platform. We do this to help these diverse business owners become leading job creators and wealth uh, creators in their communities, because when they do that, they also hire this diverse um, meritocratic uh, workforce that helps you know, deliver on the promise for the American um, dream, you know, they help invest in their workforce that allows them to buy homes, uh, send their kids to college, save for retirement, and do much more. And with regards to how the WIC community can support what we do, um, you know, helping us spread the word about our mission, um, we want to collaborate with further with the WIC and their members to help them you know, achieve their goals and advance their mission uh, with regards to uh, showing great examples of success with ESG. And so with that, uh, you know, our, our mission is to help fund and grow thousands of businesses because we know that there's significant value when you do. And with that, I am super excited to uh, contribute and participate and I'm, I don't know if there's an opportunity to at, off, uh, ask another a number of questions, but if not, 
Uh, my information is available with um, uh, Patty and the producers of today's summit. Uh, and so thank you you're, again. You're fantastic. I mean, this is, I love what you're talking about, Kim. And, you know, I met Indra, I drew for her with her new leaders program. And one of the things that I, what, I was so moved by her because she walked in the room and she had on a Pepsi shirt, right? Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. said to everyone, how many of you wear a Pepsi shirt when you go to your family picnics, right? And how, and and what are we doing to make change in the world? She really got her rolled up her sleeves, looked at the vision of the future that those young leaders were creating and got involved. So I love her story and everybody. She's got a whole bunch of stuff out on LinkedIn now. So you should watch some of that. But mm -hmm. also, too, um, how, also, I'm hoping that someone will put in this in the chat how they can get a hold of you to ask you more questions. Does anybody have a question or did we get any Q&A? Let me just look in the Q&A. Um, how is important? Here's a question. How important is the G when you talk about corporate culture shifts? Oh, it's very important um, because strategy is should be designed and codified and practiced by yep. the uh, governance, which is the board of directors and of, of the organization. And so without having that buy-in, because that's the decision makers with regards to how resources are allocated. And if it's as only practiced at the, be at the individual contributor level or the, you know, first line manager level, but not at, it's not represented at the board, then you're not going to have that, that wholesale uh, changes. Like we we're talking about Indra before she became CEO at Pepsi, she was on the board for five years leading up to this. So she started her work at that governance level. And, yeah. and actually when she decided to join Pepsi, she wanted to make certain she had that level of, uh, of, of support at that governance level to drive that level of change that she did. Yeah, it's, it's such an amazing thing to watch her trajectory and what, mm -hmm. and I think this idea that you can get involved in a board and that you can sit on a board and you can impact change from that level. Policy is everything. So we have that workshop that's coming up where you can learn about policy and how to advocate. I highly recommend that people do it. Kim, you're incredible. So I just can't wait for people to meet you. So in the networking, be sure to go and meet up with Kim. So um, thank you again for coming here. It's just a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, please, uh, uh, send me notes. I welcome the opportunity to connect with you all and look forward to collaborating in uh, the days and activities to come. So uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kim. Oh man, that was so good, you guys. So I, I took a bunch of notes up here on the wall about them, but really I love that she talked about the social impact part and how important it is for you to spread the word, just spread the word and get connected to people that are doing good work like that. So thank you so much.